What is going on, guys? Money Webby here, back again on Saturday. I got a nice eight game slate here tonight. I got it broken down for you with six of my favorite plays on the board, my money six. So before we get going, if you could slap a like on the video, that'd be greatly appreciated. Let's try to get over 70 likes on this one if we could hit that. Thank you so much. Last night, had a pretty damn solid night. We had three of our hitters get scratched. So hopefully, you follow me on Twitter. I was able to tweet out uh, the first two. Uh, pivoted off of the Corey Seager news was late. Um, it was like 40 minutes before they played in the final game of the night. Um, I honestly forgot to tweet out. So it was pretty much obvious what you had to do. You just had to like pivot to um, whoever was available for that price tag. Um, so it didn't really even need me to tweet out that kind of news. But it still sucked. Um, and but the first two pivots worked out well from Mark Reynolds who went with Ian Desmond who did really solid and also uh, from Chris Davis to Rowdy Telez who had a nice little solid night. Um, no one really went off for our hitters, um, but the co combination of everyone they kind of had around like nine to like twelve drafting points. So the, and if you combine those all together with that, with avoiding kind of a bad um, hitting hitting kind of number from one of your players it's not too bad and our pitcher jake odorisi did really well seven scoreless innings we kind of got screwed by an injury with tower glass now though um he was kind of dealing through five innings and then in the sixth inning let two guys on and then he got hurt when he had a strikeout after um the first guy got out and he, he could have got out of the gym we, we don't know if he like with the injury it's tough to say but of course the relief pitcher came in and let the two guys score, which really sucked for Glass now. But all in all, I'd say it was a pretty successful night. Hopefully tonight we don't have three guys get scratched. I feel like that might be even like the first time, maybe one of the few times this, this year I've even had one guy get scratched, let alone three guys. So definitely pretty annoying there. But definitely follow me on Twitter, at MoneyWebby, for any updates, like I said. Um, and Chris Davis is already kind of shaky before when I was making the video, but we got the pivot in. So let's get right into that. First guy up, I'm going to go with Jacob DeGrom. Just way too good of a spot here against Miami, a team that has been really struggling against right-handed pitchers so far this year. And DeGrom was absolutely dominant against him the first time out. Went with seven innings, had 14 Ks, and 45 drafting points. Do I think he's going to get 45 drafting points again tonight? Probably not, uh, but I still think he can get us over 30 be able to get the win. He's taken, what, three, four straight losses. So I think he's going to be extra motivated in that sense. Um, the strikeout ability has been back, um, but still uh, just having a little bit of tough luck with the run support the last two games. And um, against this Miami team, I think he should be able to get more run support. He's at 33% K rate so far in the year. And Vegas has only Miami uh, projected for 2.3 runs. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my first guy. Then I'm going to go with Di Scofani here. At 9,200, just saw the San Fran team, had a pretty damn solid start, six innings, got eight Ks, and that was in Cincinnati, a much uh, harder park to pitch in compared to San Fran, so a park upgrade, um, and San Fran, a strikeout prone team, they have a 26.6% K rate versus right-handed pitchers, we saw Castillo go for 11 Ks against them in just six innings last night. And uh, they're only implied 3.3 runs as well. So Vegas already likes Di Scofani. And at 9,200, I think he can honestly get us over 25 drafting points. And he's been really dealing uh, over the last few games. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my second guy. So that leaves us with not as much money left for the hitters. But we're going to go with some cheap guys that I think can still have us some pop. And the first guy, I'm going to go back with Ian Desmond. Not really that cheap. Um, but he's on a nice little stretch here. Hits very well against lefties, especially in course field. Going against another lefty here tonight, 333 ISO against them, 5.2 runs implied, and he has some really good RBI upside <clears throat> with the likes of uh, Trevor Story, Arenado, and uh, the other guys ahead of him um, that could easily get on base, and then Desmond can knock him in with some uh, really good power against the lefty. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my first guy. Then I'm going to go with Stewart, an up-and-coming guy um, that has been doing really good for the Detroit Tigers so far this year. So, well, not really good, but just power-wise, he's been pretty damn solid. 7.3 drafting points in, what, uh, 18 games. I'm not sure if he started all those games. Um, it's still really doing well um, against uh, right-handed pitchers, and he's going to be going against the righty here on the doubleheader. So, going against Cole Stewart, Stewart versus Stewart, a little funny there. Uh, Stewart versus Stewart. Um, Cole Stewart, though, was really bad in his first start against the Astros. It is a tough matchup. Um, but still, he allowed a good amount of power 
Um, and his analytic numbers behind that start weren't very good at all. So Christian Stewart, kind of a cheaper guy considering his pop ability at the 315 ISO and a 42% hard contact rate versus righties. Hopefully the Tigers can wake up. They've been uh, really slow down the last two starts, so I think they could maybe just have a little positive regression here in this game. Against a lesser pitcher, the main thing with the Tigers is they've been striking out a lot, but Cole Stewart isn't really a strikeout pitcher. So maybe they can get more contact, get some more hits, and Christian Stewart could be a guy that leads to kind of rallies the troops a little bit and goes deep here in this spot against a righty. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my second guy. Now we got to go cheap, like I said. Uh, Robinson Cano, first up at 3,500. He's quietly been pretty good against righty so far this year. Has around a 300 average against them. Um, and his power hasn't been too bad around a 190 ISO and a 45% hard contact rate. So he's still hitting the ball hard. He is an older guy now, but still, uh, the numbers aren't bad. I don't know why his salary is so low, considering what he's been doing recently. Actually, uh, he said it hasn't been that great, but the last two games, two out of the last three, had a double, or two doubles, I mean, 18 drafting points and 12 DK points <clears throat> against Miami here last night. So hopefully we can keep the hot stretch going a little bit. Um, but he has had these random kind of spurts um, against righties. Obviously, he's been terrible against lefties. Uh, this year, uh, but we got him against the righty here tonight. Uh, Vegas likes the Mets a good amount here tonight. They're implied 4.6 runs, and Cano is still in that around that three spot. So I mean, he has his upside. He's going to be given the opportunities for around five plate appearances if he can. Uh, if this Mets lineup can keep it going, so I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my third guy. Then I want to go with Candelario, another kind of a younger guy that has been going with some, uh, going through some struggles right now. He's been hit less in his last. 19 at bats it says here definitely not very good but still the one positive about going hitless is that your salary drops to like bare minimum almost he's at 3200 and this is a guy that does have the ability i mean he was hitting uh pretty damn good he went through a nice little hot stretch uh for a little while when he's the leadoff hitter for the tigers but now that he's been struggling they put him down in the lineup um but the thing is with him he's much better against right-handed pitchers that's what he'll be seeing in this matchup and it's a good opportunity for him to bounce back. He's going to be sitting in the game one of the doubleheader. And uh, maybe that kind of helps him out. Some guys in doubleheaders, they can be a little bit tired, I guess, in the second leg. Um, but Candelario will be a guy fresh, ready to go if he does play in game two. And hopefully bounce back at a really nice price tag at 3200 for a guy of his ability. So I'm going to go ahead and lock him in there as my final guy. So you got DeGrom. Di Scofani, I think both of those guys could honestly combine for 50 drafting points, maybe even more. Cano, Candelario, both guys that seem a little bit underpriced, that are in good spots. Desmond, really good upside against the lefties. And then Christian Stewart has that pop at a nice price, like a 4000 A lot of these hitters on the slate are honestly overpriced. Um, so I had to go cheap and make it work. So hopefully you can as well. But good luck here tonight. Hopefully all the, the elite kind of hitters really just kind of poop their pants. And these pitchers for us, the elite pitchers, DeGrom and DiScofani can really steal the show. So drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any more MLB DFS picks. And uh, we'll see you back here again next time. Good luck, guys.